This video from Learn Electrics is intended to give you a heads up on the assessment criteria for the 2391 and similar qualifications so that you can better be prepared for what you need to know. The 2391 assessment and any other practical assessment will almost certainly always include a test on a final socket ring circuit. Expect your assessor to ask questions as you test. Impressing the assessor now will help in their overall assessment of you. It is also a frequent exam topic to test your theory knowledge of ring circuits. This is the most involved of the tests and if you can test correctly and understand what you have tested then you will be able to test almost any circuit. That's my opinion and I've assessed lots of people. A 32 amp ring final circuit is very common in most electrical installations in the UK and you absolutely must be able to test a ring final circuit in any assessment. If the test board has a ring circuit on it, then it is a good bet that the assessor will be asking you to test it. This is a dead test and there are three tests for you to carry out. A low ohms continuity test to prove that each conductor is continuous, a low ohms crossover test between line and neutral and a low ohms crossover test between line and CPC or earth. The low ohms continuity test will give us the ohms or resistance value of the three conductors individually, line, neutral and earth or CPC as it should be called. This will give us the values of little r1, little rn and little r2 respectively. The second and third of these tests are what are called crossover tests and it is the third test that gives us the R1 plus R2 number to enter on test certificates. Notice that this time we are using big R's, big R1 plus big R2. Before carrying out any work, always complete a safe isolation test and lock off. Always start by saying to the assessor, I'll just do a safe isolation before I start. The assessor will be watching and will expect this to be carried out correctly. In fact, as an assessor, we will expect you to instantly fail any candidate that did not start with a safe isolation before starting any dead testing. Failure to safely isolate may result in a failed assessment. You must be able to demonstrate that you can identify the correct circuit and breaker, that you can choose the correct test instrument, usually a voltage indicator, and you must know how to use it. And are you able to check that the instrument is working against a proving unit or some other known source? You absolutely must be able to use your test gear. The assessor is not there to teach you, he or she is there to assess what you already know. Can you confidently isolate the circuit from the supply? Can you prove that the circuit is dead? Do you know why we test line to neutral, line to earth and neutral to earth? Do not forget to recheck your test instrument against the proving unit after the tests. This is another failed assessment point. And don't be surprised if the assessor asks you to explain what voltage to expect for a dead circuit, for a circuit that is still energised, or for a reverse polarity circuit. You need to know this. And at the end of this video, we will tell you what they should be. Let's begin with low ohms continuity test on each individual conductor. We will assume twin and earth cable throughout this video with a size of 2.5 mm line and neutral and a 1.5 mm earth or CPC. Having safely isolated the circuit and removed both twin and earth cables from the breaker, we can begin with a low ohms test between the two brown wires. This is in fact the two ends of the same line conductor. We want to know if the copper is continuous from one end to the other. This will give us little r1, the ohms value of the line conductor. Let's say that this is 0 0.9 ohms in this example. Write this number down and the fact that you are recording your test results will impress the assessor. Now carry out the same low ohms test on the two neutral wires. This is called little rn and it should be about the same ohms value as the previous test. After all, 
They are both the same size conductor and they both travel the same route. So we should record 0 0.9 ohms again for this example. Now we want to test the earth cable or CPC for low ohms or continuity. This will give us the little r2 result. Let us suppose that we have an answer of 1.5 ohms. But what ohms values should we expect? Is 1.5 ohms the right answer? How can we tell? Because the earth is a smaller size than the line conductor, the resistance of the earth should be higher. Thinner cable, higher resistance. But by how much? Let the cable sizes tell you the answer. We have 2.5, 1.5 twin and earth. So 2.5 divided by 1.5 is 1.666 and so on, which we can call 1.67. The earth value should be about 1.67 times greater than the line. And 1.67 multiplied by 0 0.9 ohms gives us an answer of 1.5 ohms. It's that easy to check that the earth is about the right value. The second test is to cross connect the line and neutral conductors. We don't record these results on the test certificate, but we do need to know that all is well. It is important now that the cross connections that we make are the correct positions. If not, then we will get wrong readings. Connect the line of cable one to the neutral of the opposite cable, which is cable two. It must be the opposite cable. Now connect the line of cable two to the neutral of cable one. What you should have now is the circuit conductors connected as shown. This is sometimes called a perfect circle and we will show you. In a perfect circle, we can trace the wiring from any starting point. And if we always travel in the same direction and follow the route of the wire, it will always return us to the starting point after visiting every part of the circuit. Follow the yellow arrow on this drawing. It will return us to the yellow dot. From N2 to L1, along the brown wire to L2, on to N1, and then along the blue wire back to N2. We can draw this another way. We could open this up into a circle. L1 is still connected to N2, and L2 is still connected to N1. The brown wire is still there, and so is the blue. And we could ohms test across any two opposite points, and the meter reading will always be the same. We are testing the same cable and the same length of wire every time. Let's collapse the circle down now and put the sockets onto the wiring. We should low ohms test at every socket between line and neutral, making sure the socket switch is on. Record the results. The ohms value is made up of parallel resistances and can be calculated by adding together little r1 and little rn and then dividing by 4. In this case, we have 0 0.9 plus 0 0.9, which is 1.8. Divide by 4 and we have 0 0.45 ohms. And this calculated value should be pretty close to the measured value. Every point on the circuit should be almost the same value. Now we can cross connect the line and earth wires. This will give us big R1 plus big R2 and we will record this on our test certificates. This is the value that is added to ZE to give us ZS. Connect line 1 to earth 2 and line 2 to earth 1. And our circuit should look like this. We can now low ohms test between line and earth at every socket. We are measuring R1 plus R2. This is big R1 plus big R2. We can also calculate it by adding together little r1 and little r2 and dividing by 4, because they are parallel resistances. We have 0 0.9 plus 1.5, which is 2.4 ohms. Divide this by 4, and we have an answer of 0 0.6 ohms for r1 plus r2. Your measured value should be about the same as your calculated value. Repeat the test at every socket and record each ohms value. The highest value is the number to write on the test certificate for R1 plus R2. 
We should go over these calculations so that you understand what is happening if asked by the assessor. In a radial circuit, big R1 plus big R2 is the same as little r1 plus little r2. But in a ring circuit, they are not the same. Little r1, rn, r2 are the end-to-end -end resistances of each conductor. And big r1 plus r2 is the effective resistance of these little r1s and r2s. This is different for ring and radial circuits. One is a series circuit, the other is a parallel circuit and it makes a big difference. Let's look at these two different circuits. In a radial circuit, we simply add little r1 and little r2 to get big r1 plus r2 as shown. But in a ring circuit, after adding them together, we divide by four. This makes the r1 plus r2 smaller as shown. This is the effect of parallel resistances. We can look again at what the conductor values should be. If we know little r1, we can calculate what little rn and little r2 should be. If we have 2.5 and 1.5 twin and earth, and r1, little r1, is measured at 1.2 ohms, then little rn must be the same as little r1, because they are both the same size. But little r2, the earth, is a smaller cross-sectional area, so it must have a higher resistance. Using the size of the cable, we can say that 2.5 divided by 1.5 is 1.67. So little r2 must be 1.67 times little r1, which is 1.67 times 1.2 to give us 2 ohms. Little r2, in this case the earth, is 2 ohms. Your assessor may ask you to briefly describe some problems that you may find on a ring circuit test. This is perfectly normal and does not mean that you have done something wrong. The assessor is gauging your knowledge and understanding. It's part of the assessment process. You may be asked how you would identify a spur during a test. During the crossover tests, you will test each socket for low ohms. They should all be the same value within a very small fluctuation. If the ohms reading suddenly jumps up, this may be an indication of a spur. In our example here, we have measured 0 0.6 ohms for all the sockets, and we then find one socket with a value of 1.4 ohms. A sure sign of a spur or spurs, and further investigation should reveal this. There may be other reasons, but investigate the spur possibility first. If the cross connections have been incorrectly made, that is to say, that cable 1 has the line connected to its own earth and cable 2 has its line connected to its own earth, then the ohms readings will not be correct as we test. As you move around the circuit, the ohms readings will gradually increase as you approach the centre point of the ring, and then diminish again as you work back towards the consumer unit. Look at this drawing and you can see what has happened and this is easy to identify with a twin and earth cable. However, with single cables that have not been adequately marked, it can be easy to make this mistake. Sort the problem and start the test again. Unexpected high ohms readings at random sockets may indicate loose connections at the terminals or a worn or faulty socket. And always remember to turn the socket switches to the on position. In the off position, an open circuit, high ohms reading will be given. If you want to test that the switch is working, turn it off and repeat the test. You should get a high ohms reading and a low ohms result when you turn it back on again. Always ensure that you are testing between the correct terminals on the socket as this will also give an open circuit or high ohms result. In a good, balanced ring circuit, do not expect the readings to be exactly the same at all points. There will be a very slight variation, just hundredths of an ohm. Small manufacturing changes in cross-sectional area can have a small effect on resistance, and cables that have been overstretched or damaged may have higher resistances. Cables that have been installed in areas of increased heat may also show an increase in resistance too.
Always carry out safe isolation and lock off before testing. The assessor will be watching for this to be done correctly. Measure the end-to-end -end resistance of each conductor first, little r1, rn, r2. To measure r1 plus r2 for a ring circuit, we should cross-connect cable 1's line to cable 2's CPC, and then connect cable 2's line to cable 1's CPC. Make a low ohms measurement at each socket and record the highest value. To calculate R1 plus R2 for a ring circuit, add little r1 to little r2 and divide by 4. At the beginning of the video, we talked about safe isolation and the importance of you knowing what voltage values to expect when testing for dead. The two tables here show what voltage an energised circuit will give between the indicated terminals as a correctly wired circuit and as a reverse wired circuit where line and neutral are crossed over. And they also show the voltages for an isolated circuit. The upper table shows the voltage to expect if isolating a circuit at a single pole circuit breaker and the lower table the voltages if the double pole main switch is used for isolation. Pay attention to the red circle on the top table. A single pole breaker in a reversed wired circuit will not safely isolate the circuit. The neutral bar is unswitched and therefore all the neutrals are at 230 volts. The neutral is actually the line and the line is the neutral. A dangerous situation which is why we always carry out a full and proper isolation procedure before declaring that the circuit is dead and before starting our work. We hope that this video has helped your understanding and that you've added a little more knowledge to your mental toolbox. The assessor is actually on your side. He or she wants you to pass, so know your stuff. Make sure that you can test properly and that you understand what each test is doing. And good luck. Thank you for watching this video. It is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. Here are some tips on getting even more information and help out of learnelectrics.com. At your web browser, enter learnelectrics.com into the search bar. Select learnelectrics.com from the choices offered and the website, as shown, will open up for you. You now have a couple of choices. You can search for a help item or any video by entering a keyword into the search bar on the right. Click on return and all the help files and videos with that word in the title will be listed for you. They will be shown with a short description and each video that is listed will have a link shown that will take you directly to that exact YouTube video. Or you can browse through a list of all the available items and videos. To do this, click on the LE logo on the top left of the home page and all our items and videos will be shown. There will be 10 items shown on each page and at the bottom of each page is a page selector, page 2, page 3 and so on. And these will bring up the next 10 items or videos in the list. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so be sure not to miss the next one. Once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.